Hello everybody, and welcome to our HESIP Principles Training. What is HESIP? HESIP stands for Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points, and it is an internationally recognized system for reducing the risk of safety hazards in food. It is a systematic preventive approach to food safety from biological, chemical, and physical hazards in production processes, from raw material, production, procurement, and handling, to manufacturing, distribution and consumption of the finished product. It is a progressive method of identifying hazards in the production of food and implementing control measures to prevent, eliminate, or reduce these hazards to an acceptable level. To build and implement a HESIP system requires that prerequisite programs and HESIP plans are implemented. The prerequisite programs are programs that are put in place in the company to control hazards in the environment and prevent contamination of the product. Prerequisite programs provide a hygienic environment, operating conditions, and good manufacturing processes for personnel that reduce the risk of contamination of the food product. Common prerequisite programs may include, for example, cleaning and sanitation procedures, personal hygiene, traceability and recall programs, pest control programs, trainings, receiving, storage, and shipping procedures, among others. And the HESIP plans are prepared for each product or process and identify possible hazards and controls in place to make sure the hazards are prevented, eliminated, or controlled to ensure acceptable levels in the food product. To develop a HESIP plan, there are five tasks to accomplish before the application of the HESIP principles. Assemble the HESIP team. Describe the food and its distribution. Describe the intended use and consumers of the food. Develop a flow diagram which describes the process and verify the flow diagram. After the five preliminary tasks are completed, the seven principles of HESIP can be applied to ensure safe food production. Principle 1, conduct a hazard analysis. Principle 2, determine the critical control points, CCPs. Principle 3, establish critical limits. Principle 4, establish a system to monitor control of the CCP. Principle 5, Establish the corrective action to be taken when monitoring indicates that a particular CCP is not under control. Principle 6. Establish procedures for verification to confirm that the HESIP system is working effectively. And Principle 7. Establish documentation concerning all procedures and records appropriate to these principles and their application. Principle 1. Conduct a hazard analysis. This is where the processes are evaluated and where we identify where hazards can be introduced. All hazards are assessed and categorized into three groups, biological, physical, and chemical hazards. A general definition of a hazard as related to food safety is conditions or contaminants that can cause illness or injury. Biological hazards can include microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, yeasts, molds, and parasites. Physical hazards include objects that are hard or sharp such as glass, metal, plastic, stones, or wood. Physical hazards can lead to injuries such as choking, cuts, or broken teeth. And chemical hazards vary in the aspect of production they are related to. Some potential chemical hazards are the improper use of pesticides, chemicals used on processing equipment such as sanitizers or maintenance chemicals, or allergens. In this step you will need to make sure that you have the expertise to make an accurate evaluation of the hazards. The hazard identification is done in two steps, first the identification of hazards, then an evaluation of the hazard. The hazard evaluation is a determination of the degree of risk to the user from the identified hazard. Once the hazard is identified and evaluated, the team must identify critical control points. These are points where the hazard must be controlled, or it will present a risk to the end user. Principle 2. Determine the critical control points, CCPs. A critical control point is defined as a step at which control can be applied and is essential to prevent or eliminate a food safety hazard, or reduce it to an acceptable level. For each critical control point you will need to identify the preventive measure. Examples of CCPs may include thermal processing, chilling, testing ingredients for chemical residues, product formulation control, and testing product for metal contaminants. How will you prevent the hazard? Use of specific temperature, pH, time, procedures, etc. Principle 3. Establish critical limits. A critical limit is a maximum and or minimum value to which a biological, chemical, or physical parameter must be controlled at a CCP to prevent, eliminate or reduce to an acceptable level the occurrence of a food safety hazard. For example, 
establishing a maximum or minimum limit for temperature, time, humidity, viscosity, pH, salt level, chlorine level, or other processing characteristic that will control the hazard. This is the critical limit for the CCP. If this limit is ever exceeded, corrective action must be taken, and all affected product controlled. Your next step is to establish criteria for each critical control point. What criteria must be met to control the hazard at that point? Is it a minimum temperature? Are there regulatory limits that you must meet for this control point? Principle 4. Establish a system to monitor control of the CCP. Monitoring is a planned sequence of observations or measurements to assess whether a CCP is under control, and to produce an accurate record for future use and verification. What will you measure? How will you measure it? Can you do continuous monitoring of the control point? If not, how often will the measurements need to be performed to show that the process is under control? The monitoring that takes place at the critical control points is essential to the effectiveness of the HESA program. The monitoring program will be made up of physical measurement or observations that can be done in a timely manner, to provide the information in a time frame that allows you to take action and control product if an out-of-control situation occurs. Principle 5. Establish the corrective actions to be taken when monitoring indicates that a particular CCP is not under control. The HESIP system is designed to identify health hazards and to establish strategies to prevent, eliminate, or reduce their occurrence, however, deviations from established processes may occur. When there is a deviation from established critical limits, corrective actions are necessary. This will be identified ahead of time for each CCP. The action must make sure to determine and correct the cause of non-compliance, to determine the disposition of non-compliant product, and make sure that no unsafe product is released and record the corrective actions that have been taken. The action or actions taken have two purposes, to control any non-conforming product resulting from the loss of control, and to identify the cause, eliminate it and prevent the situation from reoccurring. By identifying the corrective action before an out-of-control situation occurs, you are prepared to take action quickly if and when it does occur. Principle 6. Establish procedures for verification to confirm that the HESIP system is working effectively. The HESIP plan must be validated. Once the plan is in place, we need to make sure it is effective in preventing the hazards identified. An effective HESIP system requires little end product testing and verify that the controls are working as planned. In addition, a periodic verification of the HESIP system should be conducted. And Principle 7, establish documentation concerning all procedures and records appropriate to these principles and their application. You will determine what records are needed to show that the critical limits have been met and the HESIP system is in control. Address regulatory requirements and include records from the development of the system and the operation of the system. Some of the records to maintain for the HESIP system should include for example, HESIP team, HESIP plan, verification procedures, monitoring, validation records, and daily production records. So, why HESIP is important? There are several benefits of implementing a HESIP program, being the most effective method to ensure food safety. It also reduces or eliminates the risk of producing unsafe products. It provides confidence in our products, as well as customer satisfaction. It is a cost-effective system that targets critical areas of processing. It works well with existing quality assurance programs and it improves the food inspection process. Congratulations! You have now concluded our HESA Principles training. Thank you, and if you enjoyed our video, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel to check for the upcoming videos.